Rwanda in Kenya, Ambassador James Kimonyo is right here with us. And uh, uh, the question we essentially want to ask is the learnings for Kenya from Rwanda, especially seeing as while these investments are taking place, they are expected to start serving the region. Karibu sana, sir. Thank you so much. Now, first off, of course, uh, seeing the fact that uh, this is just one of uh, the several different investments that have been made in that country uh, by global players, what exactly is Rwanda doing differently that we can borrow live from? I guess we are doing what uh, everybody else is doing uh, mm -hmm. in the region, but uh, I think what we have done uh, is to try and create the environment that will attract investments from across the region, but also across the globe. Mm -hmm. And Volkswagen being one of the you know, strong brands in terms yes. of uh, car manufacturing, we are so glad that uh, we were able to take up the opportunity to come and invest in Rwanda. But I can tell you that uh, even Kenyans uh, are doing very well in Rwanda in terms of investments. Mm -hmm. In fact, at, at some point in 2015, 2016, Kenya was the single largest uh, investor compared to the rest mm -hmm. of yeah, the country. At, at some 43 billion shillings. Yes, uh, and, and so we, we really have tried to do that in terms of reforming our, our, our laws and, and policies to make sure that we attract investments. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, what has made Rwanda to really be the leading you know, state or nation uh, in the sub-region on the continent in terms of ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. As we speak today, Rwanda is second to, to Mauritius. Uh, in terms of doing business and first in EAC. Yes. And, and there's no magic behind it. It's just the reforms that we haven't taken and implemented uh, the policies that are conducive to, uh, to, to business uh, leaders to come and, and take up the opportunities. And, and before you proceed, I would say that I want to thank you for this opportunity because, yes. as you may understand, we are having our National Day uh, on, on the 4th Wednesday, whereby mm -hmm. the main theme will be talking about business. Yes. And so this opportunity to talk to the business leaders and. And, 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 and the leaders of industry is very, very critical for us. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe in this show, we may not go into details in yes. terms of what we offer as a country to attract investments. Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage those who are watching and following this show that we have the materials, enough for them to understand the details about the you know, uh, legal uh, regime that we have, uh, tax regimes, and yes. the incentives that are offered to different investors in different sectors. Mm -hmm. So we have all the brochures that can provide information. Yes. You can come at the embassy in Nigiri, you can come at the uh, KICC on 4th at 2 p.m. We'll be having the materials that are going to be mm -hmm. distributed to the participants mm -hmm. to be able to read the details uh, depending on which sector you want to enter into. Yes. E even as we talk about the great moves that have been made right across the region in terms of business, the greatest challenge for business, especially in Africa, remains the uh, continued difficulties in trading across borders. And this is right across Africa. And the fact that uh, trade between African nations remains at a minuscule amount compared to the global amount. Mm -hmm. What do you think at the African level needs to start to happen so that uh, countries like such as yourselves are able to take advantage of your positioning in the continent mm -hmm. right at the heart to be able to trade with your neighbors? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important uh, question. Uh, let me say that back in 2004, uh, when we were trying to implement our vision in 2020, yes. Rwanda figured out that you cannot achieve anything if you try to be alone, to work alone. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time during the time of Mzeki Baki as the president of this country and our president agreed that as much as we may want the whole continent and the sub-region to open up, let's do it bilaterally. And yes. when Rwanda opened up for Kenya, many people are very skeptical about the, the move mm -hmm. because this is a very tiny economy uh, that is opening up for a, the giant yes. in the sub-region to come and do business with us, open up for professions to come and work. Mm -hmm. What we achieved from that particular arrangement mm -hmm. is, is very, very positive because we saw growth we saw, we, we saw growth in terms of creating jobs and also improving the, 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 you know, how we conduct business because yes. of the experience this country has. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what you're saying is true. Even in the framework of EAC, East African Community, and the, you know, part of it which is a you know, a Northern Equality Initiative, is to try and open up this region because every individual single, single entities are not viable. Mm -hmm. Even if Kenya had has more than 40 million people. Yes. And with this strong economy in the sub-region, mm -hmm. Kenya alone cannot be viable. Yes. Rwanda alone cannot be viable. Any other country on the continent cannot be viable. South Africa is strong because it opened up for Sadak. Yes. And I think 
uh, the move that you saw in Higari when the president chaired uh, the signing of CFTA, the yes. continental free trade area, mm -hmm. is to try and open up the continent because of the potential we have. Yes. We have skilled human capital, we have resources, we are trying to build our infrastructure and be connected, all of us, mm -hmm. because this market of more than a billion people is the market that we should really take advantage of. Yes. So the, the policies that uh, have really dominated our continent in terms of being you know, inward looking, this is my border, I don't want to let people move it. Mm -hmm. Rwanda was the first country, or among the first countries on the continent to open up for any African nation to come and you've to our border and enter. Results, yes. You know, people are scared about security, tourism and all, but we cannot be so strict and put in place stringent laws at the expense of opening up for businesses. Mm -hmm. Because we all talk about, there's this slogan, wherever you go, everybody talks about private sector-led growth. Yes. You cannot have private, uh, you know, growth that is led by private sector. We do not, do not open up for people to move around, for mm -hmm. business to move out. Someone who is in Nairobi or Abuja buys a ticket, go to Kigali, negotiate business, that's it. Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting forever to get the visa to cross and, and go to Rwanda or any other country. So yes. I think that's a very important point. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the signing of a CFTA by many African countries mm -hmm. will open up the continent and, and, and the market mm -hmm. of you know, of our products. Uh, someone was telling me, so fruits that are packed, uh, packed somewhere in, in West Africa mm -hmm. that were exported from Kenya to Germany and re-exported it to one of the African countries. Yes. Because we cannot trade among ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the way to go, I think. Yes. Uh, again, le let's now talk about the Open Skies Initiative and the fact that uh, recently Rwanda, uh, Rwanda Air did uh, get, uh, uh, so, so to say, permission to start flying into the American airspace uh, in just a few months' time. This is a huge accolade, especially for such a small airline, uh, not having a history as long as some of the other operators on the continent. And this is essentially opening up that region for the entire a bigger uh, American uh, continent, uh, not just North America, but also South America as a stepping stone uh, because of uh, those direct flights. What do you think the potential for this is? I think that's a very important move also. You see, as much as we may want to have the advanced uh, physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. we need to have an effective air transportation system. Yes. That's why as much as we are working very hard to, you know, to, to make sure that we, have, we are connected to the ports, through railway lines, through roads, and, and otherwise, but it's very important also to be connected in terms of air transportation. Mm -hmm. That's why even before we talk about global airspace, you know, a partnership, we, we want to really be sure that every country on the continent is, is you know, acceding to what, what we call BASA, yes. bilateral air service agreement, mm -hmm. whereby, KQ, Ethiopia, and South Africa, you know, airline, Rwanda you can, you know, go to any city and fly out of the, that city take you. The competition among the airlines will create, you know, opportunities for travelers, for passengers to mm -hmm. actually get affordable tickets and be able to move around the continent. Yes. So I think that's very critical for us. As much as we may want to develop you know, serious physical infrastructure, air transportation system that is very effective is very critical for us to be able to connect in terms of doing business together. Mm -hmm. The opening up of the America's market and the fact that uh, Rwandan coffee and other, especially even in tapping the tourism market, you can now do this directly without being a very long haul destination because tourists used to have to go through Europe and other places. Oh yeah, uh, we are seeing the results. After going to, to UK and now going to Europe through Brussels and now opening up the US, mm -hmm. going to India, Mumbai, we, we are seeing a lot of you know results and even the, the, the passengers who to travel through you know, other continents going to Europe are coming to get it, fly out to Dubai, to go mm -hmm. to Mumbai, to go to, to Europe, and now to go to US. And that, that will happen when KQ opens up yes. to have all those options. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is a very positive move for us. What we need is to not preach or talk about it, but to actually implement what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, we are out of time, sir, but just 30 seconds to remind our guests, uh, our viewers, about the fact that uh, the open day is coming up and that they should be able to come in and uh, to your one stop uh, center and mm -hmm. be able to get the information they need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we, we have uh, developed uh, documentation that uh, helps people who would want to invest or take advantage of what we offer as a country, mm -hmm. whereby you come in, in our office and those who will be able to come at KCC on, on 4th, mm -hmm. which is this coming Wednesday, we give you a package of information that actually even before you move, you travel to Rwanda, you have everything. Mm -hmm. You can actually register a business when you are seated in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. You can file for taxes when you are seated in Nairobi. 
And in terms of investment, we don't talk about agribusiness or mining or real estate. We actually give you projects, specific projects with the cost. Mm -hmm. So that if you are interested in one of those projects, you can actually fly over, look at the, the, the actual projects, and maybe do your own assessment mm -hmm. and invest immediately. And this has helped to really save time for investors. Yes. Because as you know, even when you walk in our you know, uh, Rwanda Development Board office to register a business, it takes six hours. That's yes. what uh, has made Rwanda to be the best place okay. to do business. So I, I, I'm calling upon those who are watching, uh, those who have time on Wednesday to come. We have the package of information. And I want to say, Rwanda is ready for Kenyans, specifically, yes. because I'm responsible for this mm -hmm. particular okay. territory. Mm -hmm. Rwanda is ready for you to yes. come and invest. There are a lot yes. of opportunities. Yes. The environment is so smooth. You come and register. You can import your capital, export your capital. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of you know, uh, incentives in terms of uh, corporate income tax from yes. zero percent, fifteen percent, depending yes. on what you want to, to, to do. So there's a lot that you can you, you can learn from uh, from that open day when we are celebrating our twenty four years of, uh, of of liberation. Okay, indeed, uh, sir. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but uh, quite a lot much. to talk about. And of course, the fact that that day is indeed coming up and people should make a date. Thank you very Thank much, you so much, High Commissioner, for your Thank time. You. Well, on that uh, informative note, we want to take it to a short break, but when we do come back, we have yet another special guest here in studio, the CS for Labour, Kuri Yatani, the Honourable. He's right here in studio and will be talking to us about Labour and, well, the Kenyan economy. Do stay with us.